My father taught me that God wanted to punish me, that I deserved to be punished, um, was going to strike me down, and that I should be afraid of God. Tell me about your father. What is he like? What's he like? My father growing up, I used to say that I was raised by animals, but when I got into rescuing animals, I realized animals cared for their young, protected their young, defended their young. So I wasn't raised by animals. So I joke now that I was raised by monsters. And I would actually went to wolves. I was raised by wolves. But that, no, as I learned about wolves, wolves protected their, defended their young. So <laughs> my father was very, very intelligent. My father, I believe, now as I'm much older, I believe he was diagnosed as a very, very high cycling bipolar, but he would swing fiercely from gregarious to violent. And as he would make us clean the grout in the windowsill with the toothpick and bleach, he would make us vacuum our rooms and then go underneath the beds with a, with a toothbrush to make sure all the carpet fibers were going. He was obsessive compulsive. He was brutal. He was violent. He was a deviant and I would say criminally deviant. My father was um, very, very smart, very mechanically inclined. He was antisocial, extremely antisocial. I don't ever recall my father ever having a single friend. So his family was the one thing that he could control. Why do you think that is? Was that a result of his mom and dad, or do you have any insight? From what I understand, my father was the first living child. His mother and father had a child before him that passed. I don't believe that his mother ever recovered from that. But what I saw of my grandparents' relationship, my grandfather was extremely verbally abusive to my grandmother. And my grandmother was very enabling. And they had three children. And my father was the oldest to that. My grandfather was raised without a father, did not know how to parent, I assume. And so my father was raised very brutally, to what I understand. And my father was blessed with two little girls who he brutalized. So give me three words that you would use to describe your father. Unpredictable. Sadistic, terrifying. Are there any good things you learned from your father? I learned mechanical skills. My father wanted a boy. He got me. So when he wanted to work on the car, I had to hold the car at 2,000 RPMs. I had to learn what a socket wrench was. I had to get him a bandsaw. I had to learn all these things. So now I can change out the pigtail on a dryer. I know the difference between a hex wrench. I know a Phillips flathead and I can handle myself. I can fix virtually anything given the directions and the tools. I learned how to do that. Um, I learned, my dad had this ironic thing for being a hero. He would help strangers. There are many situations where there would be someone stranded in a very urgent situation and my dad would step up, man up, and help and not take credit for it. I remember we were it was a we were on a road that was it was sleeting, it was freezing rain, and there was a car that would actually strain it in the middle of the road. My dad escorted my mother, my sister, and myself out of the vehicle. We were standing there cold and parked his truck perpendicular to the car to prevent it from being it, it up the road to, so people would hit that his vehicle before he would hit this car with people in it. And he would do these amazing things, but I learned through that that doing the right thing for others, do unto others, and I now know that's do unto others, but to help other people less than, weaker than, who were not able to help themselves. Ironic thing of him doing that, going out of his way to help others, and yet 
you guys growing up right under his roof and him not having the same thing for you. It was very confusing that he would help strangers and not that he would protect strangers and not protect his own children. It was very confusing and hurtful to me. But that is a good thing I learned from him. I learned an appreciation for guns. I learned appreciation for martial arts. I learned an appreciation for finer things from my father. He did have some good things about him. I'm able now to see some good qualities about him. Sure. What are the bad things? My father taught me that the world is a very evil, dark, violent place. My father taught me that violence is the way that things are done. My father taught me that I cannot trust anything or anyone. My father taught me... I remember a conversation when I was very young in grade school, primary school, two hits. You hitting them, them hitting the ground. Taught me how to make a fist. I look back and laugh, thinking maybe he really wanted a boy, but that was his mindset. Violence. My father taught me that everything out there is, is bad. And my father taught me that God wanted to punish me, that I deserved to be punished. Um, was going to strike me down and that I should be afraid of God. My father took us to church every time he was in town and then would <clears throat> keep us up late hours drilling scriptures into our head. Have us on our hands and knees while he drilled scriptures into our heads. So I developed a lot of damage towards God from that relationship. I thought if God was so all-powerful, if God was so big and so strong, what did, what did God have against me? What did I do wrong? If God was that powerful, why couldn't he stop my father from hurting me? Why couldn't he change my father? If God was truly God and if God was truly in charge, why was he allowing this to happen? Because I grew up with a father who was violent and angry and unpredictable, who was scary, I thought God was the same way. I, because I grew up with a father who was to be feared, I thought God was to be feared. Um, what do you wish your dad would have told you but didn't? I wish my dad would have told me that I was important, that I was special or precious, or that I mattered. Did he ever say I love you and son? No. Never? Never. How do you think that impacted your life? I used sex to get love. I would have done anything to get what, I had no idea what love was. So if a man, showed me physical affection. Well, this must be love because that's what my dad had done to me. So this must be love. This is the only thing I knew that love was. And love hurt on every level for me. So this was love. My sister and I were raised by the same man. We went two different directions with our sexual behaviors. We were, I believe, I know for a fact, both raped by my father. I can't speak for my sister, but there's, we were both raised in the same house. My sister was extremely, extremely promiscuous in high school. I was not. I was very prude, but I became first sexually active when I was with my daughter's father, I think 17. But after that relationship failed, and that was a terrible relationship, after that relationship failed, I became extremely sexually active, looking for love because that's the only way that I knew the man, that a man would love me. That's how I, love was shown, was through sex, through physical 
was love. There was no other parameters or guidelines for love in my life. If a man loved you, this is what he did to you. What's the most memorable thing that your dad ever told you? Good or bad? My dad sat myself and my sister down in the master bathroom on the tub and said, you girls are not pretty. Y'all are never going to be pretty. And I'm going to tell you this because when you find out about it out there, it's going to hurt you. Is there, is there a good thing that you remember him telling you? Was there a saying or a phrase or anything like that? that Two hits. You hitting them, them hitting the ground. When did you realize the impact of growing up without a father and how much it affected your life? I realized it as young as 16, 17, when I saw other girls dating and their dads caring about who they dated. I left home at 16 because he was going to kill me. But when I saw other girls being protected by their father, I looked at that and I knew that's what should be happening. And I wanted that. So just your father showing an interest. Just, just even showing an just interest. Just caring about who, I'd, who, who was taking me out. I wanted a dad to sit that boy down and clean some guns. And I wanted him to care so much. That's all I wanted was just him to care. Okay, so how did your dad's influence impact you as far as marriage is concerned? I've been married four times. I was looking so hard for security, for somebody to love me and not leave me to not feel alone, to feel like I was part of something. I wanted to be safe. I wanted somebody to care about me and not leave me. That I was partnering with anybody who would for whatever reason. I wasn't even checking their qualifications. I wasn't praying about it. Anybody who would have me, I got married and then it was a disaster, but I just wanted somebody to care about me. I had no self-esteem because the man who gave, who, I was his child. I, f because he didn't value me, because I was nothing to him, because I had no value, no worth to him. I wasn't pretty to him. I was looking for that in someone else, somebody to make me feel pretty, somebody to make me feel valuable, somebody to, to tell me I was worth being loved, I was worth something. I played on a sports team. I would get up to bat and I couldn't swing and I would get struck out because I didn't believe I could hit the ball. And it was easier for me to st take a strike than to swing and miss. I had no faith in myself. I had no faith in my ability to make even a good decision. I had, I was worthless. I walked around every day. I could have been wearing a large badge stamped on my forehead or on my shirt. I'm worthless. I have no value. And I used to make an, an um, analogy. I'd hold up a paper clip. This has worth. This is worth maybe 0.3 cents. This is worth nothing. What do you wish your dad would have done differently? I simply wish he had not been a father. If you could say one thing to him right now, what would it be? I forgive you. What do you remember most about your dad? Being scared. Just scared to death terrified of when he was home, sick, the nightmares. All of my decisions became fear-based. 
marriage because I was afraid to be alone. Sex because I was afraid he wouldn't love me. Everything, important, critical decisions that should have been made based on prayer and thought and consult of people who cared about me and with wisdom and thoughtfulness were made based on fear. Every decision in my life was based on fear. And I had a front up of pride and anger hiding this tremendous fear. I would have people around me because I was afraid to be alone. Didn't matter who was around me. I would get into relationships that I didn't need to be in because I was afraid to be alone. Fear. And that all stemmed from growing up in that atmosphere. Yes, because of my father. When you hear the word dad, what, what thoughts come to mind? Hallmark, Hallmark picture of a dad and his son fly fishing on the river with the funky hats and the fish hooks in it. And I don't have a real picture of a dad. If you would have gotten the approval and your dad showing you that he cared, they think your life would be different. I would have been able to do anything. I could have gone to college because I could have made the decisions to stay in school, in the school I was in, achieved and excelled in school and excelled in sports enough to get the scholarships that I could have been able to pick the school I wanted to go to. I would have not rushed into a relationship and ended up pregnant as a teenager. I would not have had to flee home I could have stayed at home and gone to college. I could have made decisions based on that wise counsel of my parents. I could have had a wedding and had my dad walk me down the aisle. My father could have been a grandfather at the right time in my life, and I could have been married to one man and shared my life with that one man. You said earlier that you found forgiveness for your father. Can you tell me that story? Absolutely. Um, when I was about 33 years old, I got tired of being very angry at God. Very, very angry at a God that, and I don't. I think there were seeds planted all along, and people began to tell me about this loving, kind God, a wonderful God that loved me, loved me unconditionally, and that seeds began to plant roots and grow in my head. And I found my way to a church where they, they preached that. And eventually I came to accept that. So about 33, I found my way back to God and then got baptized. And I decided to let go of all the hurt and the pain and the anger. And from 33 to where I am now, I got involved in some 12-step programs because I have an addiction in my family and that is a family disease. And what I learned through these different tools in my toolbox is that God gave us as humans free will. That's one of the most powerful tools that I use to forgive my father. God was not in control of my father. My father didn't give God control of his life. My father was exercising free will when he did all the things that brutalized me and my sister and my mother. God had a plan for my father's life, but my father chose not to follow that plan. There were consequences to that, and unfortunately, people get hurt. And that's one of the most important things that fathers need to know. When you choose not to follow God's will, people get hurt, and those people are your children. When you choose not to follow God's plan for your life, your descendants, your babies, your children will get hurt. But it was up to me not to carry that pain. It was up to me to follow God's will for my life so that my child didn't get hurt. And forgiveness is how I realized that God didn't have anything to do with that. 
And God was all about forgiveness and love and kindness. And God was not going to smite me dead or strike me. God was there to take care of me and love me and be the father I never had. Unconditional love. I don't have to perform. I don't have to put out. I don't have to give up. I don't have to fear ever, ever again because of the relationship I have with my heavenly father. And I have been able to completely forgive that poor, flawed, unfortunate person that it was my earthly father. There's a Hebrew or Jewish concept that God gives us children not so that we can teach them, but so that they can teach us. My daughter taught me how to hug. My daughter is the first and only person in my life that taught me that touching can be a good thing and not a bad thing. How do you think your father's influence has impacted you as a mother? My father taught me to be very hard. He taught me to judge. He taught me to deal with all things with anger, and I came from very fear base. I did not use compassion. I did not use gentleness or kindness when I was raising my child. Sadly, the tools you're given as a young person are generally the tools that you use, unless there's a radical change. And there was no radical change. I was 19 when I had my daughter. And so for a good part of her childhood, I was using the same exact tools that my father had used with me. I was not violent with my daughter, but the verbal abuse was there. The emotional abuse was there. I struggle with a lot of guilt for that. that. Looking back at the way he treated your mom and their relationship, what did that, just like with my little girls, they're going to see what's normal. Whether that's good or bad, that's what they're going to think is normal, and that's what they're going to see as comfortable. It, you know, it, there's statistics that show, literally, that a little girl who grows up in that environment, she goes on to, to be in an abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. With that in mind, how is it that watching your mom and dad and how your dad treated your mom, how did that shape your, your sense of what a mom and a wife supposed to be? I just knew that it had to be completely different than what had happened there. I didn't know what it was supposed to look like except from Tide commercials. But I knew it, was, it had to be very different than what was happening at my house. So I just winged it with my daughter. And when you're just swinging it and you're 19 years old and you go through a brutal divorce where I had to put my ex-husband in jail for battering me, And I was alone with this baby, and I had no support because I had, for my own health and safety, left my family. I had no support. I'm doing the very best I could, but it wasn't very good, you know. Um, but it was all you knew. I went to the tools that I knew, and the tools that I knew weren't very good. They weren't. If you had a friend who was going to be a father for the first time, what advice would you give them? Be compassionate. This little person is so frustrated. They aren't going to have the right words. They aren't going to know how to communicate what they need. They don't know what they feel. Every moment from the time that they're born is going to be scary and confusing to them. The world as they experience it is going to be scary. Be the safest place they know. Use humor to parent. Teach, th teach them through compassion and humor that the world is a safe place. Never raise your voice unless there's danger. Mm -hmm. Trust and pray and lean on God. God is big enough to fix anything that we as humans do wrong. I've learned recently some really interesting stuff about forgiveness, which has allowed me to forgive my father. Forgiveness does not mean that he didn't do anything wrong. 
it doesn't mean that I let him off the hook. Forgiveness simply means that I let go of the rose bush. Because resentment or not forgiving is, I'm not going to let that go. He did something to me. He hurt me, so I'm not going to let that go. But when I'm doing that, that the thorns are just making me bleed, and that will cause an infection, and that's very much what it's like holding on to a rose bush and like, but I'm going to keep choking you because you did this to me. I'm going to hold on to you because you did this to me. Forgiveness is simply letting go. It doesn't mean that he didn't do anything wrong. It doesn't mean that I wasn't hurt. It doesn't mean that nothing happened. It just means that I let go. I give it back. I put it back on him. and I don't have to live with it anymore. It's truly a gift I give myself because then I can heal. I'm not getting cut anymore. I'm not bleeding anymore. And I'm not hurting anymore. That's what forgiveness is. Another analogy, I used to have this dog that was a big dog. And he'd pull and jerk and yank on the leash. So I'm sitting there, I'm holding that leash. I'm holding on to that. Knit. He's just jerking and yanking. But when I let go, he'd walk slow. And I thought about forgiveness like that. I'm going to not forgive you. Because you did this to me, I'm not going to forgive you. But then if I let it go, my arm doesn't hurt. I forgive. I'm just going to let go. I'm not going to hold on to that anymore. And in both analogies, when you stop, when you forgive, you don't hurt anymore. And that's what forgiveness is about. It's a gift. And it's a gift you give yourself. That person doesn't give it to you. They're not in charge. The person who hurt you is not in charge of your forgiveness. You are in charge of your forgiveness. And so I'm a healthy, happy woman today. I am healed because my God healed me and led me to the ability to forgive. And I don't, I sleep good at night and because I'm able to forgive and that person isn't living rent free in my head anymore because I'm able to forgive. And it's not about letting anybody off the hook. It's just, I don't worry about it anymore. That's what forgiveness is about. Watch the Father Effect movie for free on YouTube.